Whether we are there or not, ITSP Magazine still gets the best stories. Plenty of conferences and events spark our curiosity and allow us to start conversations with some of the world's brightest minds. In person or virtually, Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli go on location and sit down with them at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Together, we discover what the synergy of these three elements means for the future of humanity. And here we are, we're ready for another seven minutes on ITSP Magazine with a new short brand story. And I'm thrilled to have Sharice Badarai on with me from A-Line. Good Thanks day, for you, Sean. Yeah. And uh, A-Line is all about helping organizations throughout their compliance journey, which we're going to talk about what that looks like today. Um, maybe if you can just start off with uh, an overview of who A-Line is and what, what services you offer. Sure, yeah. So we're a cybersecurity company that we specialize in audits across all major frameworks, SOC, ISO, PCI, you name it, we do it. We're also proud to be one of the highest volume high trust assessor firms. So, which means that we get a front row seat in recognizing and understanding people's organization's compliance roadmap and where they start, where they finish, what kind of risk profiles that they have. So we have that ability to look at. And you, you, you're all about high trust. That's your role. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I do is uh, run the high trust team, and we yeah. have a we do a lot of assessments every year, and that's. The, you know, it's it's common for organizations to start out their compliance journey with a software attestation and an ISO 27001 certification. But once they've established that foundation, the question that every CISO or senior leadership in an organization should be asking is, well, what's next? Because, Sean, you and I know compliance is not a one-stop destination. Right. It, there's no finality to the process. It's an ongoing journey. And the journey entails continuously strengthening the security posture of the organization, especially in today's you know, rapidly changing cyber threat landscape. And so the question becomes, well, is there a framework that exists that is extremely robust, extremely um, scalable? It's a certification, not an attestation. And most importantly, it uses this maturity model that ensures that your security roadmap does not stay stagnant. It is constantly evolving and dynamic. And the answer to that question is yes, a framework that ex does exist, and it's called the Hytrust CSF. And within the Hytrust CSF, you have different tiers of assessments. You have the R2 assessment, which is the highest tier, which you have the I1 assessment, which is the middle tier. And then you have the E1 assessment, which is the lower foundational tier. And it has never been easier for organizations to tag on that comprehensive of a framework into their existing portfolio of a SOC to an ISO 27000. So talk to me about getting started, because I think the success certainly with SOC 2 and 27001 is rooted in that initial entry of getting started, which is the hardest part for a lot of organizations. Um, but at, that, at some point you have those two and probably other things, which is where high trust comes into kind of bring them all together and, and raise the bar some. So talk to me a little about the E1 and how that helps yeah, people so get rolling. I think what Hydras has done tremendously over the last few years is has that it has really recognized the need of having different tiers of assessments within the market. And so can we provide a smaller version of the Hydra still entailing the robustness of the framework, but the E1 assessment being on the lower side of being able to afford, and it has tremendous efficiencies to tag on to the ISO and the SOC. SOC reports and ISO 27001 certifications, those are great broad overview to start your compliance program. What Hytrus does differently is that it is extremely prescriptive in nature. And so with a static 44 requirements within the E1 assessment, it really focuses on your data security, which is never been, you know, it requires that level of security because you are dealing with patient data, you're dealing with other sensitive data. So that's where the value lies, is its comprehensive nature. And how does, how does the engagement with A-Line and your team perhaps change the way organizations look at their programs, um, not just from a tick the box perspective, but right. actually implementing controls in a meaningful way? Yeah, so after they've 
they have some level of foundation built with a SOC 2 and an ISO, it has become extremely easier to tag onto that U1 assessment to the compliance portfolio. So it's never only a checkbox. There are a lot of synergies that are gained. Uh, you know, we, we can go down the details in terms of what those are, but if you've done a SOC 2, if you've done an ISO certification, tagging on an E1, it's half the work is already done. And the other half, you know, speaks to the level of robustness that E1 has. So whether that's having to provide more population and samples, things like that, it, it, the level of robustness requires you to do that extra work, but you're half of the way there. So who, who do you typically work with um, in terms of types of organizations? Are they small, medium business, mm -hmm. larger organizations? We don't discriminate. We have clients <laughs> that are on the, the S market side. We have medium sized businesses and we have enterprise. So smaller ones tend to go with the E1 assessment and then kind of build their way up as their uh, risk profiles change. And the enterprises are, they're like, yeah, let's go. Let's do the R2 right off the bat. And when you're working with them, what, um, what are some of the challenges that you help them overcome? Well, the first is the organizational buy-in. I think okay. there's a lot of educational laps in terms of recognizing, well, we've built this great business, but then compliance kind of gets put on the side. It's not, it's on the back burner. It's not the priority. And so to try to get that level of education up at the senior leadership level is our main challenge. Once you get there, once they recognize that, yes, compliance is extremely necessary, especially when the bad actors are in abundance. Once we get that message, then everything kind of flows well from there. And in terms of the, the outcomes that you're seeing with your clients, so there's getting started, but then there's the ongoing journey. Mm -hmm. Companies grow, they, they acquire other companies. Absolutely. So talk to me a little bit. 100%. So I look at the ingestion of the HITRUS assessment in twofold. One is obviously the security fold, and I've articulated why that is very important. The other pillar is the ROI pillar, because most of the companies that we're working with, they are being backed by private equity firms. They're being backed by VC firms. And we all know what is that they want. They want great return on their investment. And there are ample, ample data that demonstrates that once you've tagged on an E1 certification, I1, R2, the Hydro CSF framework in general, it gives you an immense advantage in securing that next deal because you're gonna put yourself uh, ahead of your competitors. And so the ROI piece to the puzzle is extremely great. Perfect. Well, Sharice, thanks for sharing this story about A-Line with me and that's seven minutes. Thanks, John. You're on ITSB Magazine. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Sean and Marco's On Location event coverage conversations. Please take a moment to give the show a good rating and leave a comment. Remember to share this podcast with your friends, family, and colleagues. Come back for more conversations and follow Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli as they continue their journey toward redefining cybersecurity and society.